After World War I, young brothers and sisters, after World War I, what do you think it was about? It was the last of the Empire of Islam. And the Empire of Islam united the Muslims. But unfortunately, the Muslims in positions began to become materialistic. They loved the positions, they loved the, the luxury, the money, the wealth. And this was our weakness. So we divided. And in our weakness, right at that time, they came in and they destroyed us so easily. One of the ways they destroyed us was that they made the Turks, the Turkish people who are the Ottoman Empire and the Arabs turn against each other. One of the stories says that they went to the Arabs in their, in their lands and they said to them, how can you let Turkish people foreigners govern you and they take over the Khilafah when you are the Arabs and Muhammad وسلم, your prophet is an Arab and the Quran is Arabic. Aren't you ashamed of yourselves? They bought it. They took it. And what happened was in one instant, the Arabs chased and had a fight with the Turks and some of them cornered them at the Kaaba in the Haram and Turkish people were holding on to the reins, the ropes of the Kaaba saying, we seek refuge by Allah and they chopped their arms off. These people who were turned away from Islam, which created a warfare and a grudge and a, and a nationalistic grudge between the Turks and the Arabs until today, except for the religious ones, inshallah. And in Turkey, they changed it. This is where the heart of the Ottoman Empire was. They brought in secularist ideas. Among them was Ataturk. Ataturk coming in the name of nationalism, building Turkey, but with a flag and isolating Islam. He changed the Quran from being recited in Arabic to being recited in Turkish. And the Quran was placed in the museum in glass where people looked at it. So the Quran became a decoration, a symbol, not something which you read to understand and apply, but rather a symbol. And truly they succeeded in that. Today we see young youth being, uh, and even elderlies, people, they don't read the Quran. They don't know what it is. You know what they do? They bring the Quran and they place it in their car. And it's this small. Can't read it. And it's decorated with a zip. And they put it underneath the cassette recorder or the CD. And in the CD, it's stacked up with what? Jay-Z and Rayhana and people like uh, Abom Abomination Gaga, Lady Gaga, Gugu, all those other... Well, I don't even want to mention their names and we're in the masjid, subhanAllah. These people are an abomination and they're playing it and the Quran is down there. And I ask them, why do you have the Quran in your car? This is a good, good thing. And they say, oh, this is protection. Protection? Did Allah send down the Quran on paper or in words? And did Allah say, Inna anzalnahu Quranan Arabian. We have sent this Quran down Arabic so that you can just hang it up and place it in your cars? No. La'allakum ta'qilun. So that you may understand. So the Quran is for us to understand and apply. So this secularism came in. They changed the Adhan from Arabic to Turkish. And Muhammad became Mehmet. And Ahmed became Ahmed. And in the other worlds, Muslim worlds, like in the Arabic was lost when the Khilafah was there. The Turkish spoke Arabic. The Arab spoke Arabic. The Indian spoke Arabic. The English Muslim spoke Arabic. You know Imam al-Bukhari? He wasn't an Arab. He's from Bilad Bukhara up in Russia. Imam Muslim was not an Arab. Imam al Nasai wasn't an Arab. They weren't Arabs. Imam Abu Hanifa, his origin was Persian. They spoke Arabic. 
90% of the ulama that we know of of the past, they weren't Arabs. Yet look what they did.